there are two important V speeds to consider when planning a takeoff, VX and VY. If you're familiar with these speeds, you may know that the speeds given for an aircraft typically show VX as slower than VY. But did you know that as we get higher in altitude, VX increases while VY decreases as the two speeds converge? Why does this happen? Here's a hint. It has to do with true versus indicated air speeds. Let's review. VX is the speed that gives the best angle of climb, the largest altitude gain for a given distance traveled over the ground. It's ideal for clearing obstacles in the departure path. The VY speed gives the best rate of climb. It's the fastest way to get to a given altitude and is usually what we fly on departure when we're not concerned with obstacles. We determine these speeds by plotting out aircraft performance. First, for VX, we're looking at drag. An aircraft's drag is a combination of parasite drag, which increases at higher speeds, and induced drag, which decreases at high speeds. These combine to create a total drag curve that's U-shaped with a minimum point at the bottom. Up at altitude where the air is thinner, drag is reduced. The aircraft can fly at the same true airspeed and encounter fewer air molecules and thus less drag. So we encounter more drag at sea level. Thrust is used to overcome drag, so the total drag curve can also be thought of as the thrust required curve. The amount of thrust available depends on how much air the propeller is pushing back as represented by the thrust available curve. Thrust available reduces as we get faster because faster speeds see our aircraft flying at lower angles of attack, so the propeller doesn't take as big a bite of air as when we're flying more slowly. The speed at which we have the biggest gap between thrust available and required, thus the maximum excess thrust, is where we find VX. Once overcoming drag, at this speed, we've got the most amount of extra thrust to translate into our climb angle and clear those obstacles. Now, what happens as we get higher? We already know drag reduces, but so does thrust for the same reason. There are fewer air molecules for the propeller to push on. So the VX speeds get higher. We have to fly faster at higher altitudes to get our best angle of climb. So far, we've been dealing with forces, as in the four forces of flight, which drag and thrust are part of. Forces are easy to express, they're in pounds. These excess forces allow us to climb up to altitude in shorter distances traveled, which is what VX is all about. VY, on the other hand, deals with climbing up to altitude in the shortest amount of time. Time isn't being expressed when we talk about pounds and forces like drag and thrust, so we need to look at something else, and that's power. Power is the distance we're applying a force like thrust to the aircraft in a certain amount of time. This is what a unit like horsepower in the engine is expressing. Just like for drag, we have power available and power required curves, though they look a bit different in our propeller aircraft. But still, the greatest distance between the power required and available curves gives us our maximum excess power and where we find VY. Just like with thrust, power diminishes with altitude. A normally aspirated engine like on most of our GA trainers won't have as much air for combustion at higher altitudes. If we squeeze the power curve down as our altitude increases, we see VY increasing slightly as we climb each 3000 foot interval. You may have noticed we've ghosted the VX points along the horizontal axis, which would cause you to catch that while VY is climbing, it's not climbing as much as VX did with the same increase in altitude. So if we look at both VX and VY, we see that they start here at sea level, and as we climb, they both increase but get closer to each other until at 9,000 feet in this example, where the true airspeed for best angle and best rate of climb are the same. If we plot these speeds on our chart with altitude now on the vertical axis, we can see this relationship, where the rate each speed increases is such that they intersect at a certain point. So in terms of true airspeed, VX and VY both increase with higher altitudes, but at the beginning of the video we said that our aircraft's VY speed actually decreases higher up. Now this is because V speeds are given in indicated, not true airspeed, and up until now we've only been working with true airspeed. Have a look at a performance chart for the Cessna 172. This is the maximum rate of climb table in the performance section of the POH. It's showing the best rate of climb speed, VY, at different altitudes, but it's showing them not in true airspeed, but in the airspeeds shown on the airspeed indicator. The speed is going down as we get higher up. Remember that up at altitude where the air is thinner, the same true airspeed will read lower on our airspeed indicator because there are fewer air molecules going into that pitot tube. 
So for both VX and VY, even though the true airspeeds are increasing, that increase is eaten into a bit when we look at indicated airspeed. And in fact, in the case of VY, those indicated airspeeds actually decrease with altitude. The rule of thumb is that while VY as a true airspeed may increase 1% for each 1,000 foot climb in altitude, it'll lose 2% when converted to indicated airspeed, so it's like one step forward, two steps back. This bending back of the VX and VY curves we've drawn caused them to intersect. The altitude where the indicated airspeed for VX and VY is the same is important. This is the absolute ceiling of our aircraft, where there's no excess power and the climb rate drops to zero. An aircraft's climb performance characteristics are very complex and involve a lot of aerodynamic principles. As pilots, we're most concerned with the concepts of best angle and rate of climb, when to use them, and what factors affect these speeds getting higher and lower. So this video stands as a good primer for this, but you could check out so much more training topics and more at our website, flight-insight.com.